Hello everybody and welcome back to Cool Quotes Let's Play Dark Souls. In the last one we made our first journey into Anne Orlando and made it to Gwyn's Castle. And now we're going to finish up Anne Orlando up to the boss. I do not think we're going to fight Ornstein and Smo in this one. I think they'll have their own video dedicated to them and possibly uh, the revenge kill on Lotrek. But for this one I'm going to just show you everything there is to see about the regular part of Anne Orlando. Uh, first, you're going to see a lot of this type of enemy. The Silver Knight. Uh, it's kind of like the Black Knights we fought before, but a little bit easier. And the best way to kill them is, in my opinion, by either parrying or backstabbing. Uh, they're very, they, they telegraph their moves fairly well, which makes it fairly simple to kill them with a parry. I'm not very good at parrying. You're going to see me fail quite a bit. But I still think that that's the most effective way to kill them. Alright, so here comes another one, and I just fail at parrying again, and again, and again. <laughs> Alright, let's heal up, try again. Ah, screw it. Let's just attack him. This guy's got nothing. So anyway, as you can see, you can just attack them, but... You know, I, I still think parrying is a better way. Now, this way is actually the shortcut to where the boss is, but you can't. It's not opened yet. We we will open it. Uh, but first, you can head into this door. And this room has a lot of these little boxes, but none of them are any useful at all. However, if you hit the fireplace, you'll open a new area because it's a fake wall. And down here is several things that are actually fairly important. The first one, the least important of them, is this this chest here, which is clearly a mimic. Uh, you can tell by the chain. So anyway, I hit it for like 400 damage there, and now I'm going to fight it. And once again, I'm going to use the pillar strategy to have him hit the pillar instead of me. Hopefully. Uh, so I can hit him with a few fireballs. That's, that's good for one. Got him once. Now, of all the mimics in all the games I've ever played, this is by far the most screwed up looking one. You know, it's got like these, it's like super tall, got these super long legs, and this tongue hanging like halfway down its mouth. It's a weird looking, weird looking mimic. I, I don't know. It's freaky. Alright, so it's done. And it leaves behind the occult club, which is, you know, it's pretty cool to have. I don't really, I mean, I'm not really big on the occult. I don't, I think that's like, like if you have like, like a certain, I, think, I forget which stat it is, it might be like an intelligence or something it does a lot of damage. But this, all these chests, are Havel's armor. Remember that guy we fought for Havel's ring? Well this is all of his actual armor. And I'm not going to wear it right now because I want to be able to do my ninja flips. But it's pretty sweet armor for a heavy guy and I might use it at some point in this run. Actually I, I'm almost sure I'll use it at some point in the run. Maybe for like the four kings or something like that. Um, because, to be honest, it's good armor. It's very strong armor. It's very heavy armor. And it also had the his, like, giant club, the dragon tooth, which I am not even close to strong enough to wield, along with his shield, which, once again, I think it needs 50 strength in order to carry it. So that's more of a new game plus kind of thing. Now, these chests, there's two up here in this area, are both mimics. But I'm going to show you a cool thing that I forgot about uh, until now, which is using Lloyd's Talisman to o to open these chests. Now basically when you see a mimic that you know is a mimic, you can throw a Lloyd's Talisman at it and it'll just open. And you can take whatever's inside it and it won't attack you. Uh, so I'm going to do it to that one and to the other one. And I find very little use for Lloyd's Talisman for anything other than this. I know it like prevents Estus recovery but like I don't know, I, it's definitely situational. Now, as you can see, this guy will literally just, he'll fall back asleep. He'll, he'll stretch his arms, go back inside his box, and this guy will too eventually. So it's kind of funny. Now this door right here is also locked. We have to unlock from the other side. But this way is the way we can go, and the way we will. Um, so there's not much in this room. And I actually hear the guy shooting as I'm um, in this room, so I'm like, oh, alright, whatever. You know, you want you want to fight me, we'll fight. 
so you can take out this guy pretty easily. I just run side to side, avoid his arrow shots, and then when I get up close, I let him take out his sword, and then same thing, parry strategy. And I finally get a parry again. It only took like 10 silver knights. And then instead of healing, I waste another Lloyd's Talisman. Oh well. But yeah. Uh, there's actually... I try to hit him through the wall and fail, but there's actually a knight on the other side here. And I usually try to aggro him and bring him into this room. Uh, it didn't work right away. Of course, come on. Where are you? You can come out. There he is. Uh, but, you know, just to have a little more room, I'd maneuver him into here if I were you. This guy's just smashing up the furniture like nobody's business. I mean, who's going to pay for that shit? This furniture doesn't grow on trees, man. Well, I mean, I guess it does. It's wood furniture, so I guess it is a tree. But, anyway, after you kill this guy, you can head up to the roof via the staircase. And there's a couple more knights up here to take advantage of. Uh, that guy often shoots at you with a bow, but you're out of range if you hang out over here, so I usually take out this knight first. Yeah, this is a definitely an overkill backstab, considering he was like down to one hit to die anyway. And as you, yeah, as you can see, he shoots his little bow. You can actually get one of those Dragon Slayer bows in this level. Uh, you won't see me pick it up. I think it's a waste of time, and I'm not much of a bow, a bow person, but uh, I'll tell you where, where you can find it. Like, I'll show you the, the way you go. Alright, so the first way we'll go is down this tower, just to get a few, few things down here. And um, there's a lot of knights down here to fight, uh, so watch out. This is a trap. You see two silver knights ahead of you, and you don't see the one on your right. Uh, but anyway, just bring him into this room, and I, this is kind of like my my room of death here because I'm gonna like pull all the knights in here, and yeah, back as you can see, backstabbing these guys is not so hard, and the backstab jump attack strategy works pretty damn well against them. So employ that if you can, and same thing, pull this guy into your room of death. I love how when you shoot the guy in the eye, like it looks like steam shoots out of his head. It's like it's a really cool effect by the uh, the graphics designers here. Come on, move out of the doorway, dude! Watch out for the chairs, man. But yeah, if you're wondering where all these knights like hang out, like you know, at the end of the shift, it's probably this room. Like you know, you see like, one knight here and there over the entire castle, and then there's three in one room. I mean, come on, they're definitely doing something they weren't supposed to. Slacking off from the job or something. They're supposed to be be on patrol. All right, but you can open this for some uh, shards, I believe. Yeah, demon titan knight shards, um, and then. You can unlock this door, and this is one of the doors where it was like, you cannot open from this side. Sweet. And just to show you some context as to where we are, I'll run through this way. But it doesn't really matter which way we go. I suppose I could have gone up that staircase, and it would have made the same difference. But uh, basically, we're just going to head back up to the roof, and we're going to go that one other way that we hadn't gone before, and that is basically the way to the rest of the part of Anne Orlando Castle. Now this is an area where you just think, you might think to yourself, you know, if I could only just jump, then it would be so much easier. Uh, so anyway, there is the Titanite Demon who we're not going to fight because he is a pain in the ass. And this is the way that you would go to unlock the shortcut.
This guy is a jerk, and he likes to attack you when you come down the staircase. So I usually back him into this corner over here and take him out when I have a little room to maneuver. Uh, same thing, you can parry these guys. For some reason with the spears, I have trouble parrying them sometimes. They're a little tougher than the swords. So I like to play it safe and just uh, backstab. But it's completely up to you. Uh, if you want to see the parry on the spear, I am going to try it on this guy if I remember right. And I think I pull it off pretty, pretty well. Uh, I might actually make myself look not like a fool. Let's see. Yep. Look at that. Look how pro. Look how pro. And there goes your neck. How'd that feel? Okay, so neither of these are mimics, and they have some of the better items. The Silver Knight set is in these two chests. And that looks pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of the helmet. I think it looks like really, really long and skinny and stupid, but. Uh, the rest of the set looks badass, and you might see me wear it for Ornstein and Smo, or at least some of it. Uh, but for now, we'll keep stick with the Elite Knight. It's done us pretty, some pretty good stuff. We fought Kalog with this shit. We fought Sif with this shit. We fought a guy who looked exactly like us and sends Fortress with this shit. Man, that was a weird day. Alright, now anyway, you could. I wouldn't run down and aggro the Sentinels. Uh, right now, I'm gonna head over here, and there's a, a little break in the window right there. If you go out there, that is how you find the Dragon Slayer bow. But if I do that, then I'll have to go the complete opposite way around and have to backtrack a ton to get back to where I am right now. So I'm not gonna do that yet. Instead, I'm gonna head down here, where, as you can probably tell by the clanging and clanking and slamming, that there is another blacksmith. And man. Is he a blacksmith? Who are you? Forge your weapons? Yes. Now this is the giant blacksmith in Orlando. He is pretty badass. He makes lightning weapons, boss weapons. And as you can see, I can actually make this into the great sword of Artorius, but I can't actually use the great sword of Artorius right now. I don't even know what the Great Lord Greatsword is. I'd have to check that one out. But I can't even use the Great the the Greatsword of Artorius with the stats I have. So I'm just gonna make this a Lightning Sweethander, and that actually like it's the same sword like sword stats. It still has 260 attack as before, but it has 260 lightning damage too, which basically doubles the attack. And then if you make it a plus one, it goes 279, 279. And the next level will be 299, 299, which makes this weapon pretty damn beast. Now you can also buy uh, Green Titanite and Twinkling Titanite from this guy, but the one thing you can't buy is those Titanite chunks. Those are tough and you do have to farm them. And that is a pain in the ass, but completely doable. Uh, I just don't want to put in the time right now because there are a lot that you can just find lying around. And I'm sure I'll be able to do that at some point. Now I'm going to you know, show you guys the, uh, the Lightning Zui in, in action here. And that actually did a little less damage. I wasn't really thinking about that. Because these guys are like lightning based enemies. They have lightning spears. And when I was attacking them, it actually did a little less damage than before. But uh, that won't be the same for other enemies. That's just these guys. Uh, but the real reason I came over here is to open this uh, little shortcut, which leads back to the entrance where the two golems were that I ran by them the, going the other way. So that opens that shortcut. And then I will show you one other shortcut as well uh, that you can open up in Anarlando, which changes, uh, you know, the way you can get in. It basically just opens up this entire area, so no matter which way you want to go, you can go that way. If you want to go straight to the boss, you can do that. If you want to go to the blacksmith, you can do that. Uh, it just makes everything a lot easier, and you, have, you don't have to go as much of a roundabout. See, look at that, 400 damage in one hit. And I love how when you hit the guy with the lightning weapon, he just, like, explodes into electricity. It's pretty fucking cool. Alright, so I don't have any, any Estus left, so I'm actually going to pop a humanity here. And it's not because I'm just, you know, whatever, I'll just waste some humanity. Uh, I actually do need a couple humanity to kindle the bond, the Anerlanda bonfire in just a moment. So I figure I'll use it to heal right now, and so I'm going to use it anyway. Now, the black eye orb just started quivering, and 
That is because in this area, you can invade the world of Knight Lotrek and avenge the death of the Firekeeper. I'm going to do that probably in the next video. Uh, I can't see me doing it now. Uh, we're kind of getting to the end of this video anyway. And I don't have any Estus, so it wouldn't really be the best timing. But next time, I will definitely take down Lotrek, or at least make an attempt and, you know, get get the Firekeeper soul and revive the Firekeeper with it. It'll be good times. Uh, but that's a tough fight, so I might, I might fail. Uh, but these guys are actually tough to fight. I haven't really been talking about them. But just try to stay behind them. They're the same as the other golems, but they use this, like, force push attack, which is a real pain. Uh, a lot of people die on these guys. Just, once again, one-on-one. -on -one. If you get two-on-one, -on -one, just book it, run away. All right, so anyway, if you get this thing, you will open up the front door to Anor And the castle doors will open. And there you go. You can see the shortcut and see the other bonfire from there, too. Uh, but you definitely don't want to rest at that one. You want to rest at the bonfire with Solaire. And I will show you the final shortcut, which I actually forgot to open when we were actually right in front of it. And I will rest at the bonfire near Solaire, where I will kindle it and uh, basically finish this video up. Because uh, that, that is the second half of Van Orlando, basically in a nutshell. Uh, all that's left is the Titanite Demon, which I might not even fight, Lotrek, and the boss, Ornstein and Smo. And it is by far the hardest boss in Dark Souls, bar none. And after the Iron Golem, it's like, it's it's almost cruel that they would put Ornstein and Smo and the Iron Golem as back-to-back -back bosses. Because there's such a difficulty change. It's like you might be getting used to this game as being semi-simple, but then it just smacks you in the face with the hardest boss. So, anyway, I'm going to kindle in reverse hollowing here. And uh, I'll fight Ornstein next time. I may or may not. You know, I probably will. If there's if there's summon signs, I will use them. Um, I feel like Ornstein, is, Ornstein and Smo is a tough enough fight that it's not even that bad to use a summon sign. I've beaten them without a summon before, but I don't like to. It takes a while. It's a pain in the ass. I usually die like ten times on them. But we'll see. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll give it a couple shots by my lonesome, and if I die a few times and get frustrated, I will sum summon some help. At the very least, uh, I'll summon Solaire, and then take him out that way. But yeah, uh, that is pretty much it. Zwihander upgraded. Fire kindled. Ornstein and Smo next time. Stay tuned. And we'll see. I'll see you after, after the weekend.